know that the enemy is out the eyes of you. And I just thank God for sending them into the kingdom. Amen. So y'all just stretch your hands toward them and be in agreement with me in prayer as I pray for them. Father God, I just thank you right now for Johnson. And I just thank you for Gregory Young right now, God. I thank you for sending them to the Cathedral of the Faith Church. And I thank you, Lord, for accepting them in the kingdom of God that's on this day. And Heavenly Father, they confess you as they, Lord, and they give their personal Savior. And Lord, they prove this by being water baptized, following your commandments to be baptized and I thank you Lord and Lord right now as being pastor of this great church I just accept them as full members with all and all the benefits of the cathedral and faith church and Lord I anoint them in the name of Jesus place a fresh anointing on them oh God a fresh anointing Lord, that you keep them safe from all danger and damage. That you keep them safe from all sicknesses and disease, Lord. That you fill them afresh with your Holy Spirit and let your Holy Spirit be their guide. Their teacher, lead them and guide them in your will and in your ways. And I decree and declare, Lord, that they shall fulfill that you put them on their slaves to fulfill. And no weapon formed against them is going to prosper and it ain't going to work. And I just thank you right now, Lord, for them. And Lord, we decree and declare right now that they shall do great works for the kingdom of God, for your glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we wanna we wanna present y'all with certificates today and they say it's uh this certifies that the Chelsea White was baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son and the Holy Ghost on the 9th of July, 2017, the Cathedral of the Church. And it certifies that Gregory Young Blackson was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit on the ninth day of July, 2017, at the Theater Love and Faith Church, Wins for the Family. We love you. Yeah. 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 Let's sit there and feel for the man of God. I need something today. I need to hear a word from God today. I know God is already moving, but I need something special today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's wave our hands.
and it's physical. You know, we see all these things with Russia and Korea and all these things in the physical, but there's a greater war going on in the spiritual. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture tells us that, that this spiritual warfare, it tells us that we got to be strong in the Lord. If we gonna, if we gonna uh, be able to stand in this walk, we got to be strong in the Lord. Because as, as the scripture was just saying, we're living in the last days. In other words, time is running out. And it's running out on Satan. Amen. And that's why his attacks have stepped up on, on, on everybody. Every human, that's especially ones that's been born again in the image and likeness of God, because He hates God and He hates every man kind they is. Mm -hmm. Amen. So what He's trying to do, He's trying to get mankind to go get in sin and come to hell, so He don't be going up by Himself. Right. Hallelujah! But He wants some company. Mm -hmm. But the devil is a liar, the truth for him. Right. Hallelujah, because God has given us, the scriptures say, and, and for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I mean, we ain't fighting with no pistols and knives and all that. In this spiritual warfare, 2 Corinthians, uh, I think 10 says that, but uh, uh, we're not fighting. Uh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. With flesh and blood, but the weapons of our warfare, hallelujah, are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling out the stronghold. Yes, see, God have given us some weapons to fight with, and one weapon of our warfare is the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he'll teach us. He'll teach us about the strategies of the enemy. What Satan will use to destroy us. Yeah, he'll teach us. And then, he said the Holy Spirit is a guide. He'll guide you in the right way. Yeah, he'll guide you from evil. He'll guide you from making mistakes. But he'll guide us in the way we should live, yes. to God's way of living. Yes. Amen. Amen. Instead of the world's way of living. <laughs> because if we fall after the world, we are for destruction. Yes. But if we fall after God, we are to a good life. Yes. How many of y'all know that? Because yes. the scripture tells us that the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. But Jesus has come to give us life. And to give it to us more abundantly. And thank God Jesus came. And I thank God he went to Calvary. And I thank God upon Calvary he paid the price. To redeem us from slavery. Of being in Satan's grip. So now Satan has no hold on the child of God. Hallelujah. Because we have been redeemed. From any kind of weapon that he tried to form against us, we've been we've been redeemed from sickness, diseases. We've been redeemed from every devil, every demon that he used to bring us to destruction. Somebody said we we the Bible says that through Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God, through God, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah, we more than conquerors. Hallelujah. And, and, and see, when we're talking about God, we're talking about three. But yet, we're talking about one. And that, that, mess, that mess some people up. How can three be one? But that's the way God is. You got God the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, 
and God the Holy Spirit. And people use that interchangeably when they say the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. We still talk about the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus said in the Word, he told them in John 16, he told the disciples, he said, it's expedient, or it's to your advantage that I leave here. Jesus told him he was going to leave. He was going back to the Father, but he told the disciples, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you without some help. He said, because me here in this physical, I can only be one place at one time. But if I go back to the Father, then the Holy Ghost will come. See, and he can be everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. And he's going to lead you in the right way. He's going to guide you in the right way. And then he told the disciples, after they had received the word of the Lord, he told them, and they, they was from every nation. He told me, he said, I want y'all to go to Jerusalem. And he said, I want y'all to tarry there till the Holy Spirit come. Yes. Yeah. Somebody likes me, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> he said in Acts 1 and 8, he told him to, to he told the disciples, when he went back to the Father, he said, now I want y'all to wait in Jerusalem, in the upper room. And listen, while the disciples were there gathered together on one accord, he told them, he said, because the Holy Ghost don't come. The Holy Spirit don't come. The promised one is going to come. And when he come, he going to fill you with power. Somebody say power. He going to fill you with power. And then once you get the Holy Ghost, and he fill you with power. Now you're ready to be a witness for me. You're ready to go out and do some work for me. Because he said, he told me in Mark 16, he said, I want y'all to take this gospel to all the nations. Let them know that Jesus is God. Let them know that he went to Calvary and gave his life so they might have life. Forgiveness of sin. Let them know today that, that they can be redeemed. Let them know that they can have another last life. He said, I want you to take this gospel of Jesus Christ to every nation and baptize and say, them that believe and are baptized will be saved. But them that believe not will be damned. He said, but all of them who believe it, who believe. He said, in my name, Come on, somebody. So that's what the power is. In the name of Jesus. He said, in my name, they should cast out devils. People walking around talking about schizophrenia and talking about all kind of bipolars and addictions and all of them ain't nothing but devils and demons. But Jesus said, in my name, they shall cast them out. In Jesus' name. Then he said they shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. I might say tongues, that's your heavenly language. Because the scripture tells us, hallelujah, that if any man be in Christ, he a new creature. Hallelujah. You become a new creature, you in this world, but you're not of this world. You from a you, your spirit been born again. You got your spirit made from heaven now. Just on this earth, just passing through. You're like a pilgrim. Passing through a barren land. But your home. And when you say that you praying out the Holy Ghost, you had to go both go see hey. Now you're talking in your head. Come on now. The devil can't understand. Hallelujah. It's power. Yeah. Now see, people get mixed up. Uh, 
when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, the, you, the Holy Spirit, the, he comes in you. Amen. You get the Holy Spirit. Now he's telling you about Jesus. You know, he's showing that you fall in love with Jesus. But it's just like you got a glass of water and it's half full. You got some water, but you ain't got all the water you can have. Right. But if you keep on pouring, yeah. it's going to overflow. Yeah. That's baptized. And see, that's the second. Uh, it's one, one is called indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit when you get born again. Then you have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say overflow. Oh. Hallelujah. When he come up on you now, you got power <coughs> to go out and cast out some devils. Yes. You got power now to speak yes. with some new tongues. Yes. Hallelujah. You got power to lay hands on some sick folks and see them recover. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's why Jesus told them in Acts 2 to, to uh, wait for him in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit come. Now Act 2, they praying in the upper room and the Holy Spirit come. And, and it says that when he came, <coughs> glory to God, he said on the day of Pentecost, that was a celebration, amen? amen. They was, that, that was a feast and they were celebrating. And they were praying, and they were on one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind, and it fell the whole house, where they were, and it appeared to them to be divided the tongues of fire, and the, and the tongues of fire, they fell upon each one of them, amen? amen. And it said they was filled with the Holy Spirit, over to God. And when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, what happened? They began to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. And see, that's one of the initial signs of the overflow of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that we start speaking in tongues. And one of the greatest lies Satan have gotten a lot of church people to believe is that they don't need the baptism. Amen. He don't want them to get the baptism. Hallelujah. And then when some people uh, decide they're going to receive the baptism, he tells them that they're not speaking in tongues, but they just mumbling something. Amen. 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 Yeah, they, 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 they're, not, they're, not, they're not speaking in tongues. They just say they think somebody else is saying. Hallelujah. And then people quit because they don't know. One of the greatest things we're going to regret when we get to hell is that we didn't pray more. Hallelujah. Lord told me that years ago. He said one of the greatest things they're going to regret is they didn't pray more. We know that prayer changes, I like guess, power in prayer. But many times, the church won't pray. Amen. This church ought to be full on Monday night because it's prayer. Prayer, answer prayer. Amen. If they just knew in the spirit of what prayers was doing. Because the Bible tells us one praying Christian or put a thousand devils to fly. I mean, a thousand devils got to get out, get out of your life, your church, or whatever. Two praying Christians or put ten thousand to fly. That's why the Lord said we need to pray without ceasing. That's why He said the prayer of a righteous woman or man a very much. It's power in it. And especially uh, in Ephesians 6 and 10, where Paul tells us to be strong in the Lord and put on the whole love on God so we can stand against the wiles of the devil. The attacks the devil is going to come at you with. See, we need to be armed up. We need to have that heaven salvation. 
We need to have that seal of faith. See, and God, see, many things that God wants for us today, He can't give it to us because we don't believe. We don't believe because we ain't got no faith, much faith. Amen. But we need more faith. Amen. Amen. So we can believe God. God said in the if, if if thou can't believe, not something. But all things are possible to them who believe. You got some people believe who want a house, but they can't believe for a house. Hallelujah, I'm serious. We couldn't get the house till we could believe for the house. Have faith for it. And then God was able to step in supernaturally and bring that house to us. Same way with jobs. Some jobs. Uh, you know, they say you're supposed to have a degree to get it. But once I, I heard enough word on it, and I could believe that I could get it. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Spirit going to help your belief, but you got to put yourself in a position to get the word. Because you can't get no faith if you ain't getting enough word. And you don't get enough faith by just coming to church just probably just on Sunday. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Amen. We got to get some faith, but we got to get in that word every day. Or we can meditate on it. Day and night. Until impossible situations really in your life. Now you can believe. Hallelujah. You got to get it in your heart. Amen. You got to see it before you see it. Hallelujah. That's right. The Holy Spirit is going to help you do that. Amen. Now look. Over here in, uh, in uh, Acts 19. Turn that right quick. Acts 19. Well, go to Acts 8 before I get to 19. And we'll just take a little tour of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Yeah, 8 and 15. Thank God. Acts 8 and uh, 14. It says, Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of the Lord, they sent Peter and John to them. See, uh, the Samaritan Christians, they had been saved, but they hadn't been baptized with the Holy Ghost. They hadn't been filled with the Holy Spirit. So what the apostles did when they heard that they had got saved in Samaria, well, they sent Peter and John to go and get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. Fifteen say who, when they had come down, they prayed for them, that they might do what? Receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They got baptized in the Holy Spirit. They got full of it. Hallelujah. Yeah, he has, he has, he has strengthened you. Because the Bible tells us in this life, you're going to go through something. Satan going to make sure you go through something. Hallelujah. You're going to have some trials and you're going to have some tribulation. But I'll tell you what, if you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, he said, now you can count it all joy. Yeah, because Jesus is overcoming. 
And now you can overcome it. And guess what he can do? He's going to turn it around. And all my things going to work for you good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now let, let's look at 19. X, X 19. Man. I ain't going to just sit up here and hoop my holler and not give you the Bible. All right. So when you leave here, you're going you gonna to have something that's going to help you yes. hook the devil. Because right. I know I need the word. Amen. And this word, the only thing I'm saying, if you ain't got no word, Satan will eat your lunch. Amen. I love music, gospel music. But it ain't going to do me much good if I ain't got that word. It'll make me feel that I want something that's going to make the devil get back. Lord say, when you put on that whole arm to stand against the wise of the devil, you better have the sword of the spirit. And you better not have it sitting on the shelf somewhere. Sitting on your coffee table. You better have the sword of the spirit and you better have it in you. So when the devil come at you and tell you that your kid is failing, tell him he'll lie the truth ain't in it. You know what the word say. You know you're a child of God. You know that when Jesus went to that cross, he carried your sins up on that. And you did the sin. And now you the righteousness of God. And by his stripes, you were. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, listen, I'll I tell you what. The devil ain't spitting no more for me. Listen. The devil ain't going to spill no more for me. The Bible says when the thief is caught, he got to repeat some pain. So we got to make him do some pain in me. Okay. And we need to tell him. See, some of y'all ain't open up your mouth and just let the Satan do his hand his way. And you ain't saying nothing to the devil. But you need to tell him, you can't have my joy. You can't have my peace. You can't have my family. You need to talk to the devil. Let him know. That's why I used to do. He was trying to take my life with a whisker ball. And I heard the word of God. Word of God said, you got to talk to the devil. You got to talk, not your word, but what the Bible said. And I started speaking that Bible to that whisper ball because he wasn't nothing but a devil. And I, and I was more God give me dominion. And he give me power. And I can whisper. Hallelujah. I started seeing myself as God seeing me. You don't, you grass. God gave me dominion over you. And you can't take my life no later. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare I got no power in you. I, I decree and declare I don't need to in my life. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. And listen, the word of work is your word. Some people say that sounds great to talk to some sugary. But listen, it work. Come on, somebody say it work. Hallelujah. You got to speak to the mountain. You got to speak to that mountain that's in your way. What's standing in your way? And, and then another thing that hear you, well, you can't do this because you're black. I know so many people say they ain't gonna do that because listen, the devil don't care if you black or white or what that is. He doesn't know that that's gonna work for a lot of black folk. And then they won't even try to do that. But when you get born again, God ain't looking at no color. That's a love of playing field. You got to do the same thing a Mexican can do, a Chinaman can do. Hallelujah. Because guess what? The Bible says we got this treasure. You got a treasure inside of you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. The Bible says your body is the temple. Your body is the temple of God. Hallelujah. He living in you. 
how can you let a defeated devil defeat you when Jesus already done won? Everything is for you. Come on now. Somebody said, don't make sense. But let's open Acts 19 and 1. It said, it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. He said to them, they were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul come to them. And Paul asked them a simple question. Did you receive what? The Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost when you believe. How many of you believe in the Lord Jesus? Yeah, he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And so they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is the Holy Spirit. And he said to them, well, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. And I will water repentance, water baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they did what? Spoke with tongues. And prophesy. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, it's a new day. You know, I was, I was brought up with people, those were folks who spoke in tongues, crazy, something wrong. Call them sanctified. <laughs> now I'm in church. And guess what? Sanctified. I ought to be sanctified. Yeah, you just that you set apart from the world. Missed all them good years. Scared of being baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. One of the best things ever happened to me when I got full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah with power, changed my life, turned me around, and, 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 it's, and it made me a supernatural man. Somebody say supernatural. I can now, I can call those things that be not as though they were. And guess what, they gonna come. I can call them things. The Bible says God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. Everything you need is already in the spiritual. All you got to do is just, yet I got back, I see, and bring it in to this natural. Amen. See, the Holy Spirit will give one more scripture. I know that's a lot. Y'all don't have to get the CD on. But listen, look at, look at Romans 8.26. Somebody say, praise our God. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Yeah, Romans 8.26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helped in our weakness. Now when you, you can be weak will. You can be weak against something. A stronghold. See, Satan comes in with a stronghold of the mind. You know you need to stop it, but you can't stop it. Satan got a stronghold there. 
He got a stronghold. You need some power. You need some, you need more than willpower. You need some Holy Ghost power. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can get free and stay free. Yeah. Amen. That's what I hope being filled with the Holy Ghost comes. As well, but the Spirit himself make intercession. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, he'll intercede for you. He'll intercede with you. He make intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. He, 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 he come out your belly. Amen. He come out your belly with your heavenly language. Amen. And he intercede on your behalf. But the Spirit himself make intercession with groans. Now he who searches your heart, he knows the mind. He knows what the mind of the Spirit is. He knows what God's mind, purpose, plan for you. God say he knows the thoughts he got for you. Plans of good and not evil for the Spirit of you. Because he made intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See? The Holy Spirit, when he get to, when you get to praying in the, in the Holy Spirit, now you're praying God's perfect will for you. Amen. You might not even know what you're praying for. First Corinthians 14 tell us, but the Spirit is praying. Huh? The Spirit is praying. And now you're in God's Spirit. Now you got a spirit praying to a spirit. Amen. Amen. Somebody said you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need to pray in tongues. Amen. You need to pray in, in the spirit. Now, he tells us in Luke 11, 9, the Bible says, uh, anybody that asks, they're going to receive. Anybody who seeks on fire, anybody that knocks the door will be open. Amen. And then he said, if our earthly fathers knew how to give his child good gifts, if you go and ask your earthly father for some bread, the scriptures say he's not going to give you a stone. If you ask him for a fish, he's not going to give you a snake. Now, if your husband and father know how to give good gifts to his church, the scripture says, how much more? Somebody say, how much more? Will your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit? Who asked for it? Amen. Amen. God wants you to be filled with power. He wants you to be a witness for him. He wants you to take this gospel message all over the world. He wants you to cast out devils in his name. He wants you to pray for sick folks. Lay hands on sick folks. And see them recover. And he didn't just say to preach the pastor, the preacher. He said those who believe. The believers. He said the church. Jesus said, and on this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Then he said, whatsoever you bind on earth, I'll bind it up in heaven. How many of y'all know we got to do some bind? And then he said, whatever you lose on earth, I'll lose in heaven. It's time for the church to start binding up some of this evil. All these evil spirits that go across the land. And, and, and they're talking about how young folks shooting one another. Spirit. And we need the church got to step up and start binding these things. Start speaking to these things. In Jesus' name. And glory be to God.
We're going to have peace on the loose. Amen? Come on, let's give Jesus a hand. Now the scripture says that when they laid hands on them, you know, they were saved. And when Paul and John and Peter laid hands on them and prayed for them, they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that's what God is saying today. If you want to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit today and be filled with power, amen, so you can do the works of Christ upon the truth, come forward in Jesus' name. Today is your day. Today is your day. This is your time. It's your time to be blessed. that don't know Jesus at their Lord and Savior. And you want to be saved today. Is anybody here like that? Today is your day for salvation. Today is your day for healing. It's your day for healing.